Hello everyone, my name is Diana Orloff. I'm one of the school psychologists here in the Mill Creek Township School District and I, my colleagues and I are here today to talk about um, what it means to be a school psychologist as part of your career day. So again, I'm Diana Orloff. We have Dr. Erica Skinner, uh, Caitlin Brooks, Dr. Kim Quirk, Elizabeth Bowie, and Erin Connell here with us today. And we make up the six psychologists um, here who support the students here in our school district. We're gonna start with Dr. Quirk and she's just gonna give us a quick overview of what, um, it, in general, what it means to be a school psychologist and kind of the, the nuts and bolts of it. And then I have some more specific questions that we're all gonna answer as a panel. So for right now, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Quirk. Hello, and so what I wanna just talk about, and um, I don't know if any of you remember this last year, but I did talk about this last year as well. And especially the seniors right now, because you're all stressed and you're all worrying about where you're going and stuff. It's okay. It's okay if you don't know what you want to do. It's okay if you change your mind. My path to become a school psychologist was not a straight path at all. Um, I went a lot of different ways before I ended up here, and that's okay if you do that. The big thing I would say that school psychologists in Mill Creek do, because school psychologists across the country and even in different areas in the state do different things depending on what your school district wants. But we do evaluate students for learning problems, for emotional problems. We talk a lot with parents and teachers to try to problem solve to help students. Um, we see students um, to make sure that everyone's doing okay. That is probably some of the biggest things that we do as school psychologists, and these guys will fill in if I forgot anything. You do have to have a master's um, and a special certi certification in school psych. Um, some of us do have doctorates, but you do not have to have that to be a school psychologist. And I will say, if you come out of college with a bachelor's in psychology, that's great, but you're probably not gonna find a job that's gonna support you <laughs> in life. So you might have to go beyond the bachelor's in psychology. Um, income, I do wanna talk about income. Again, it's different. Some uh, school psychologists are, are on a teacher's um, salary scale, some are on an administrative. In our district, we just have our own scale that we are on. It can start anywhere from probably 45,000 and go up to 90,000, depending on where you're at, what contract, how many days you work. Um, we all work at least 230 days in a school year. Some only work the 180 or 190 days in a school year. So it really depends, again, on your district and how many days and hours that you work. Um, and I just want to say that we are in a shortage right now um, for school psychologists. There is a huge need across the country for school psychologists. So if it's something that you're interested in, um, research it, reach out to any one of us because I know that school districts really need them, especially during a pandemic. Um, I think it's going to be more of a need than ever before. And the, the one question people always ask me is, can you advance or do prom um, a promotion? Once you're a school psych, you can do different things, like some school psychs are teachers, and you can certainly go into teachers. Some become principals or superintendents or special ed supervisors. Those are all certifications, so you have to get more schooling, more certification to do any of those, um, if you see those as advancement or promotion or different types of jobs for you. Um, and that's really the biggest thing that I wanna say is again, it's a great field if you love people, if you love diversity, and um, you love working in schools. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Diana to start asking some questions of these guys. Before I get into the questions, was there anything that you all, as you heard Dr. Quirk speaking, that you wanted to add to what she, she mentioned about the general nuts and bolts of a school psychologist? I would just say that a big part I think of what I do daily is consulting. I mean, I know we talk a lot with students, you know, in person or with parents over the phone. We, you know, consult with them as well, but I do a lot of consulting with teachers. So it's a lot of intervention prior to the evaluation process. So we're kind of problem solving. If a student's having an issue, we meet as a team. And that's a lot of my days meeting as a team to talk about um, the issues that the teachers are seeing in the classroom. And then we are specialists in um, what the evidence says is best practice for those students. So sometimes that conversation can lead to just interventions that we think we can put in place in the classroom. Sometimes it leads to um, 
a screening that we can complete and it's really cool as a school psychologist you learn how to give a lot of really cool assessments like IQ tests and achievement tests and you learn a little bit about how people learn and how everybody learns differently and then through that process we might even go to, to a full evaluation but I would say a lot of what we do too is just working directly in like data teams and student support teams to help teachers and students in the classroom. Another thing I would like to add really quickly yeah. since so, um, is a lot, one question I do get from other people who are interested in school psychology is if there's anything else you can do with your degree. Once you get a master's or a doctorate um, specializing in school psychology, can you just work in schools? Um, and the answer to that is no. While we are specialized and trained to work in schools, we can also work, um, for example, as behavior specialists, um, or we can work in a behavioral center. Sometimes we can work in hospitals. Again, it all just kind of depends on the certification and the training you had, and you might have to do a little bit more but our jobs are pretty flexible since we do learn a lot about um, even counseling practices and stuff like that. So we can kind of be moved depending on um, what's needed and where your interests are. Um, and we kind of wear a bunch of different hats. So sometimes we can take the role maybe a, of a counselor and do a little bit of therapy, or maybe we'll be focusing again on behavior or evaluations. So you kind of get a really well-rounded education when you go um, further into school psychology. All very good points. All right, so let's get into some more specific questions that I think it'll be nice to kind of just hear the difference in, like Dr. Quirk mentioned, the paths that we all took to get to, to where we are today are very different. So I think it'll be good to kind of hear um, how we all got to where we are and our different experiences. So our first question is, what is a typical day in the life of a school psychologist? I know Dr. Quirk shared a little bit of it. Um, Dr. Skinner added some to it. But anything else you guys want to put in as far as what we do in a typical day besides testing students, talking to students, sitting in on team meetings, anything else that you think of as kind of part of a typical day? I'd just like to jump in here. Um, there is no such thing as a typical day <laughs> in our job. <laughs> because we do wear so many different hats and the breadth and depth of our knowledge has to be pretty significant. Um, we really, you know, there could be days where I have 10 things on my to-do list I'm gonna do some evaluations, maybe some consultation, reach out to a parent, but instead I'm kind of responding to big, what we say like crises or big problems that need immediate attention. Um, that happens very frequently, I'd say. So um, if you're, I think that when you are thinking about what career you wanna choose, and if something that, if stability as far as what your day's gonna look like every single day and you need the same thing, this might not be that job for you, but if you like that flexibility and you like um, to kind of just be on the go and a quick problem solver, then this is a really good career for you. I think that was a really good answer and it's a perfect segue to the next question, which is what types of skills or personality traits do you think school psychologists need? And I would agree flexibility is number one because most of the time our to-do list doesn't get done because we're helping with other things going on. But what other things do you think a school psychologist um, it's beneficial in your personality and your characteristics to be successful as a school psychologist. It's one thing as a school psychologist, you definitely um, need to enjoy learning um, because we do go through a lot of schooling um, to kind of get to where we are. You have to really like to learn new things and understand that even after you're done with your program and your degree, you're still going to be learning because best practices, as Dr. Skinner mentioned earlier, those are always changing. New assessments are always changing. So our career is kind of a lifelong learner is, is what we um, would say. So if you enjoy learning and, and understanding new things, then this is definitely a career for you. Um, another thing I would like to mention is you have to enjoy writing because we do <laughs> write a lot of reports. Um, so if that's something that you, you enjoy, just kind of taking your time and writing very thorough reports, then that's something else that we do a lot of in our jobs. I would also add that you have to be a pretty good communicator. I hope we're doing a good job with that right now, <laughs> hopefully. But we do a lot of communicating with everybody around us, whether that be school personnel, parents, students, community service providers. Um, so much of our job is face-to-face -face, um, problem solving and knowing how to relay very complex information, especially when we've done an evaluation, um, to stakeholders. So to all of those people I just mentioned and how to kind of 
um, summarize some of that information in a way that everybody can digest and get meaning from it and so that we can help and apply um, what we've done with that student in the classroom. So I'd say that's a big part of it too. Is if you enjoy communication and that's a strong point of yours, then this might be a good profession for you. I was just gonna add that you have to be good at time management, you have to be good at multitasking, you kinda have to be good, like um, we've already talked about, doing a lot of different things in a day, having a plan, and then completely changing your plan. You have to be very flexible um, and able to kind of manage yourself in difficult situations. So you have to be able to remain calm um, and be a good problem solver. And I would just say you also have to have a big heart <laughs> and lots of empathy and want to work with people. So I, we're often referred to as just like social scientists um, because we do care exactly what Dr. Skinner just said. We ca you have to care and you do have to have that empathy. You have to, uh, I think a, a really good quality and or a characteristic or something that you might even have to work on um, is being able to take on the perspective of others and being able to um, be open-minded because we all do come from different backgrounds and there's a lot of times where I don't know at all what I don't have any of the same experiences as a student or a teacher or an administrator has and so just being able to kind of take that step back and try to see things from their perspective is really helpful for communication and it's a, it's a skill that has to be honed throughout your lifetime and your career and your training. Um, and I think that's something that we all continuously work on, even today. We all learn this at different points in our career, is to be able to compartmentalize and to make sure that we aren't taking everyone's problems home with us. Because we need to be moms and wives and sisters and aunts to the people in our families that we care about. And we can't we have to be able to kind of leave things at the door. Pick them up the next day with an open heart and open arms and, and jump in with two feet. But at the end of the day, you have to learn to be able to put it put it aside, set it down, and, and, and kind of have it be done for the day. Because otherwise, you, it, you will burn out very quickly in this job if you take everyone's problems home with you. We just don't have enough space in anyone's heart or on anyone's shoulders to carry that burden all the time. So that's something that if you know that you wear your heart on your sleeve and you have a tough time handling your emotions or, or, or distancing yourself from very strong and provocative things, this might not be something that would, would be um, very appealing to you. Or it might be something that is appealing but you know you need to work on. I certainly think that that's something that we all do to varying degrees is being able to separate um, our jobs and our home life for sure. Likes, dislikes, or advantages, disadvantages of our jobs. <clears throat> well, I love the flexibility. Um, while I can be really social, I also can, I like that time where I'm just all by myself too. Um, so because we do a lot of consulting and working with other people, um, that kind of takes care of my social needs, but I also love the fact that I can kind of just go and I can write reports if I need to for a few hours to kind of get that breather. So um, that's one of my favorite things about the job. I'd say one of my favorite things about the job is um, being an investigator. I think I went into, and oftentimes, you know, I think when we think about psychology and a lot of people who like psychology are interested in how people learn, um, you know, what kind of things are out there to help people, why people are the way they are. Those things are really interesting and I think they're, you know, sh those shiny things in the distance and it's fun to learn about those things. But I think what school psychology brings into the field of, say, clinical psychology, what makes it, what's, what separates it is um, the diverse roles that we have, um, but you still get that fun part of understanding how students learning, you know, trying to figure that out, trying to pick out what assessment is going to figure out what's going on with this student, going and observing a student in, in their regular environment. Oftentimes when you go into clinical psychology, you know, it's in a very contrived sort of situation. You're evaluating the student in an office space. You don't really get to observe them in other areas of their life. Um, but in this field, you can, and we get to um, 
have so much more information that way. And so I feel like when we do our evaluations, um, I always feel a sense of pride like we did this very comprehensive, um, taking a deep look at what the student needs and um, trying to figure out what we can do to help them. And at the end of every evaluation I do, I always kind of feel like this sense of, you know, gratitude for being able to do that and being a helper. I'm just gonna talk about pros and cons a yeah. little bit. So um, the pros for me is I love working on teams. I love working with the, the counselors, the administrators, the nurse, all the people who are on your team to try to problem solve. But at the end of the day, you also, the best advice a professor gave me once is schools are socio-political matrices, which means they're social, you have to fit in and figure out the social aspects of everyone's personalities, teachers and everything but they can also be very political, which means everyone has their own agenda. A parent has their agenda, an administrator has their agenda. Our agenda is the student. We always, no matter what else is going on, we have to figure out what to do to best help the student. So that can be a very challenging part of the job um, at times, but um, it does fit in though, I think, to the skills that we've learned. I think that going along with that, one of my favorite parts of the job is being able to be that advocate and that champion for students who may may or may not be getting what they need or we're, we are making sure that they are getting every opportunity they can to reach their potential and to succeed and that we are really the people here who are looking out for the students and I think that's one of the, my favorite things that we get to do that to make sure that every student has a chance to reach their potential and to do their best um, but on the flip side too that can be a disadvantage because we want to help everybody mm -hmm. and like we said we you know we have a lot to do and we get very busy and a lot of times it's not possible to help everybody no matter how hard we try so I think that is something that is very challenging to accept um, but it is also one of the better parts of the job too that we get to do that okay a few more questions I hope we're doing okay on time what suggestion do you have for someone considering becoming a school psychologist? Well, Dr. O'Connell just finished school, so she might be the best person to answer this right, question. She's the freshest out of school, so we'll let her start. I would say um, one of the first things to do would be to do some research. We're all sharing our um, experiences and the things that we enjoy about the field um, I would encourage you to do research as well whether it's reaching out to one of us and asking us some additional questions that you might have um, there are tons of online resources uh, the National Association of School Psychologists or NASP has tons of online resources for people interested in the field as well as the American Psychological Association or APA um, so I would look into those um, while you're considering going through college and getting some information that way, reach out to your professors as well. I think that they are very good resources to kind of help you um, get some information about all the different avenues and what you can do with a, a psychology degree starting at the bachelor's and then continuing on going on to master's or doctorate depending on what your interests are. Um, those professors at the college level personally really helped me uh, gauge what I wanted to do and kind of think about the different avenues that you can do within the psychology field in general. So that would be a good place to start. I wanted to mention along those lines, um, I think I might be the only psychologist in our group particularly that took a different path to get here and like Dr. Quirk was saying. So I think it's really important to mention like you guys might not know what you want to do right now and I certainly had no idea what a school psychology was, <laughs> school psychologist was when I first started my bachelor's degree. I actually was in education to begin with. I got my music education degree and I thought I always wanted to do that. Um, but I met a friend in college who said that he was taking these classes to get an educational um, psychology minor. And so it wasn't that many credits. I took a couple of the classes and I absolutely fell in love with one of the classes, which was about behavioral management and understanding behavior and what drives behavior and how to change behavior. And I also had personal experiences in my life, and oftentimes school psychologists do, um, where they know somebody who you know received special education support, or they knew somebody who struggled with some sort of mental health issue. Um, and I had the same sort of experience, so it was 
you know, the perfect storm that kind of led me into this profession. And so just keep an open mind um, when you go into whatever field you're going into, especially if it's related to education, you might find that this is a passion of yours and, you know, you don't have to go into psychology at first to become a school psychologist. You can go into the education field as well and it'll lead you in the same direction. And I know for me, I was a high school and college athlete and but I really enjoyed psychology. I took some psych classes uh, in high school. And so I was an undergrad in psychology just like everyone else. Um, but I knew that I loved sports. Sports was a huge part of my life. And most of the time our teach our coaches here are teachers too, right? That's really the majority of our coaches are teachers. And a lot of kids who are interested in continuing their their athletic career through coaching think they, they can only be a teacher. And and I was a coach here at McDowell for many years. So that's another option for those of you who want to continue in that aspect um, and continue with coaching that it's you don't just have to be a teacher not that there's anything wrong with being a teacher but there's other people in this building who do things and just like dr skinner said i didn't even know we had a school psychologist in my high school i, I don't know if we did or not <laughs> most people don't know you know we only work with a select population but i think it's good to just know that there are lots of support people in this building that you may not know that are helping the wheels turn and helping this school stay afloat and, and make, making everything work really well um, so just kind of keeping that in mind for anyone who's out there that, you know, is pers who thinks that maybe someday they'd love to coach and continue with that, that the, the things that ath athletics brings to the table. So I just want to throw that in there as well. Anybody else? I wanted to add too that look for opportunities that you can have right now um, to kind of get your feet wet and get yourself into some of this field. I know when I was in high school, I volunteered at summer camps, I volunteered um, to tutor younger children, um, I volunteered for a lot of different things, um, and we probably have some opportunities right here at school, and then when I went to college, I worked at summer camps, and I worked at, for programs with children with disabilities, and was able to just really get a feel for what it feels like to help others, and um, to know that that's the direction you want to take, to have some real life experience, there are things you can do right now. Okay, and really we're down to our last kind of last two questions. I'll put them together and just say anything else. Any other advice, anything else? Normally there'd be a Q&A that we could answer more specific questions that students have. Unfortunately, that's not how this is gonna work today. Um, but we do understand that there would be an opportunity for you guys to potentially reach out to us via email or some other mode of communication to ask those questions and we would provide some follow-up. But anything else from the panel for today that we'd like to share, um, some final thoughts, I guess. My biggest thing is to work hard you know I feel like if you are really motivated and you want to get there in school psych uh, you don't have to be the brightest you don't have to be the smartest at the top of your class but if you're willing to work hard and you like working with people and you care and can listen um, you would like this job and especially the diversity I love that part um, but I think it's a great job I love my job I would just like to add that one of the greatest things about our job, it's kind of reiterating what we've already talked about so much, but because we have um, specialization in so many different things, I feel like throughout the process of schooling and now being in the career, that I'm able to really bring a lot to the table when I come and work with students and work with teachers and parents and everything there. So I think that that is one of the, the really exciting parts about this job is that you learn a lot about a bunch of different things and you're able to bring all of that together when working with students with all sorts of different needs. And I'll just add that I think it's really cool that this profession you know, 20 years ago, it looked a lot different. I feel like every year it's constantly evolving. And so for us, you know, we have to go and get continuing education. Um, once you get this degree in order to continue being a school psychologist and have um, your certification in whatever state that you're in, um, you have to go and get professional development. And so we get to go to these conferences almost every year, a little bit different this year, but, um, it's like you're constantly learning. There's always something changing. And the best part about school psychology is I feel like school psychologist roles are only becoming more and more um, visible in the schools. Before, which is probably why I didn't know what a school psychologist was growing up, 
Um, they were mostly, you know, doing testing and, and placing students in special education or gifted education, and that is still a big part of what we do. But I also feel like the roles that we fulfill now have made us much more visible in the school system. It allows you get to get to get to know a lot of different people around you, and it allows the students to know who you are. And if that's something that you like, connecting with students, connecting with people, and um, really being able to diversify your skills in so many different areas, and this is definitely the profession for you. Anything else before we wrap up? I'm guessing we're probably close to our time limit. Good luck. <laughs> we have a question. Yeah, well, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate it. We Obviously, you can tell the six of us, we love our job. We really do. We come to work every day excited for it. Um, there's certain things that are, are, tip, are tough. I'm not saying it's all sunshine and roses, but we do love our job, and we wouldn't have it any other way. So we hope that you find something you know, in your future that you love just as much as we love what we do. So, good luck, everyone.